Ted, Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks All for right. having us. I'm super excited to have you guys in here. Two reasons. Uh, one, I think we're all pretty much on the same page as far as how we want to have more business down here in Greensburg, which is awesome. And you yeah. guys are doing that. Uh, two, we're going to drink some good beer. That so. is pretty much what I was putting <laughs> this planet for. So Definitely. So let's hear a little bit about the brewery. Okay. So um, we're Invisible Man Brewing, Sean McLaughlin, Ted Mallers, uh, our other partner, partner uh, Stephanie Victor, couldn't be here today. Um, her and her husband, Dan, uh, have Yugo's Tap Room, and that's right around the corner here in Greensburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the three of us and we're opening up, you know, a pretty stellar brewery right on 132 South Pennsylvania Avenue in Greensburg. And, uh, you know, it's been quite a process, but we're like right around the corner here. Yeah. So we'll be opening up in the next like, you know, couple weeks and yeah. you know, the finish line's like right there. It's awesome. So you guys are opening on, do you have a, a solid date? There's no like solid date yet, okay. but I mean, we could be open as soon as, uh, the 11th or 12th or you know maybe the week after that super exciting yeah we're just trying to stockpile enough beer you know to really keep us uh on the level with everything for sure i mean because people are gonna people are gonna bomb this place people are just (laughs) gonna be in there they want to drink your beer i mean i've had it at hugo's um it's delicious thanks thank you all of your beers are like extremely drinkable which is i think the greatest thing that you guys have going for you um when we were down a few weeks ago at Hugo's, I got myself uh, one of the Belgians. And I was telling you guys both, like, Belgian is just not my thing. I don't like them. But I wanted to get one. I wanted to support you guys. And I grabbed one, and I was going to give it to uh, hand it off to my wife. But I tasted it and was like, oh, shit, we need to get two more of these. <laughs> like, it was, it was just, it was delicious. Good and, bad. you know. I mean, that's a that's a great thing to have is a, just a drinkable beer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of my favorites, uh, the Belgian Blondel. And it's like for 7.1%, you would never guess, you know, because right. you can just drink and drink, drink. And then like, you know, maybe after four or five, you're like, oh, wow. OK, there it is. <laughs> uh, but that one's called Moves Like Van Damme. And uh, that was like a playoff of uh, like Moves Like Jagger, um, except we used like the I guess it was uh, like a YouTube skit. With uh, Jean Claude Van Damme dancing to that song, you know, moves like Van Damme, and he's the, uh, I think, the muscles from Brussels in Belgium. So it all came back, you That's know, awesome. full circle. Very cool. So as far as like just the whole idea of starting a brewery, I mean, let's just get into that. I don't, I don't know that it is that you just like wake up in the morning and you're like. I'm going to open a goddamn brewery <laughs> or maybe it was, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> well, uh, I've just been kind of like a journeyman as far as uh, you know, career path. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I love working with people. Um, so, you know, I was doing gas and oil stuff, sales, uh, worked in the restaurant bar industry, um, worked at Idlewild for a little bit, you know, way back in the day. Uh, I think everybody from late Trobe kind of had their little stint there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but You know, I got approached by uh, Steph and, you know, she was interested in doing something different. Um, And I figured, you know, if I could make a career out of selling beer, I think I know enough about that, uh, that, you know, we could make a go of this. So that's kind of how I got into it. Yeah. It's such a cool thing. I mean, like, and I think that you guys like really got in at the right time. Like we had talked about that. Once you guys really kind of, you know, grabbed up your building, everything was good, had your plan together, then it just seemed like there was more and more around you guys popping up. And for you guys to be like one of the first on the block or there, it's it's just, it's awesome. I yeah. mean, I mean, just to build on that, like it's so cool to see people walk around in Greensburg again, all hours of the day. Absolutely. Even into like, like the later evening. Um, you know, I, right before I moved back to Greensburg, I was living in Pittsburgh. I was living right in the South side by mm-hmm. South side work. So I was just used to getting out of my apartment and just going for a walk. You can walk all over the city. You see people, you meet people. It's, it's really like a, like a captivating thing. Um, and I grew up around here. Um, so I wanted to see that happen closer to home because I knew we had the potential. You see all these like older towns and cities that maybe have taken a step back from what their like former prominence was like you know, they're, they're rebuilding 
um, and kind of like rising from the ashes of like living in the rust belt here. Right. Um, and it's really encouraging. I mean, you see it a ton in Pittsburgh and now it's just moving as everything does outside of the city. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like just the same. I mean, I lived in Lancaster mm-hmm. for a few years and, you know, everyone thinks Lancaster is this, uh, you know, like a field out in the middle of nowhere with cows and, and just nothing left. That place is like, it's a bustling city. And I mean, when you're in that, when you're in that place, it's, you are, there's no chain business inside of Lancaster. There might be one Subway and like one McDonald's. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but inside of that, you're very dependent on small business and you're very dependent on like, you know, your neighbors to support, um, you know, your needs. So if you want to go grab a beer, you go to a local brewery. If you want to go get dinner, you go to a locally owned restaurant. And that is the mindset that I kind of got in when I was there. And I'm so excited to see this happening here. Like this is, it's so important. It's like one of the coolest things ever. Yeah. I mean, small businesses, local businesses. um, I mean, you get natural ingredients, you get local people, you know, it's got more of a, um, I don't know, like a family kind of feel to it, a friendly kind of feel. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I still go to Lowe's to get things that I can't find downtown. Sure, absolutely. But I mean, I support all our local businesses first and foremost. Yeah. Uh, I think it's cool to keep those big boxes as a backup. Um, but you see more and more things pop up. And ever since like I've been down in Greensburg doing the brewery, trying to get it ready, uh, I became familiar with so many small businesses down here that I didn't realize were open that even existed. Right. So I think that now that there's kind of like a wave of business coming back, you're going to see people come in to maybe want to go grab a beer, want to go to a boutique, want to go get brunch or, you know, have an early dinner somewhere. And they're going to see these stores and, Oh wow. You know, now I can come here instead of, you know, driving out of the way to go there. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a great domino effect, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'd love to say that like, this is going to be like, a continuation, which I can see happening because you have a lot of like really like, I guess, influential people that are like for this, for this, uh, like rebuild of downtown Greensburg. And, sure. uh, you know, I'm kind of excited to see where it goes. Absolutely. I mean, Ted, you and I were talking, uh, the day that I came down to visit the brewery, we were sitting there talking about like, you know, when you go out with your friends and stuff like that, like the South side, for instance, we were talking about it's, you know, you go down, you hit one place, you go to the next place, you go to the next place and stuff like that. So exactly what you were saying, Sean, like, I think that that's a hundred percent correct. Like we're going to go down, we're going to drink at your place, you know, uh, then we might, uh, you know, go down to one of the local stores or go down to Hugo's or then go grab dinner somewhere else and things like that. So it's, it's just a, like you said, it's a domino effect. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like to see, Downtown Greensburg become like a, a, a day destination where you can spend your whole Saturday afternoon there. You know, come down the Visible Man, grab a pint, um, walk next door to the boutique that's opening, shop around a little bit, head across the street, see what's going on over there. Where you can kill a whole afternoon or even a, a, a weekend um, just seeing what Greensburg has to offer. And I, I think this is the first link in that chain, hopefully, um, that in the future, you know, a year, two years out, that's what it becomes, at least for downtown Greensburg. And I'd like to think that we're on the ground floor of that. Absolutely. You guys definitely are. I mean, like, <clears throat> that's like kind of what we were saying, just like all these other businesses are popping up, uh, you know, redoing buildings, getting in there. And I mean, you can walk around and see the amount of work being done on different buildings and then you know, like liquor licenses in, in windows and things like that. And it's like, it's very exciting to see. I mean, you know, we just found out that, uh, you know, a big Italian restaurants taking over the train station and stuff. And that's, uh, the other, the other one is out in Trafford. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really I, think cool have, place. I think they have three locations. Oh, do they? Yeah. And I mean, I mean, my wife and I, we, we've eaten there once and it was one of the best meals I've ever had. I was like, Oh my God. And then there's going to be one just, you know, right around the corner yeah. from this office. So I'm like real excited about it. It's going to kill my, my low carb diet, but whatever. 
Uh, Doesn't that's matter. okay. You can go like a little <laughs> bit with like a just all carb diet. Right. That's yeah. like the, what the Da Vinci diet or yeah. something. Just nothing but pasta <laughs> and wine. Nothing but. But yeah, dude. I mean, like, I'm super excited to see what you guys are doing down there. And then, like, when I came down to visit and things, like, I Ted, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I know that you were like a home brewer yeah. at first. This is how you started out. And, uh, you know, that's awesome. I've been friends with a lot of, you know, home brewers and stuff like that. How do you make that leap from brewing in, you know, small quantities to brewing in these giant tanks that you guys have? I mean, how many gallons are those things? Uh, it's three and a half barrels. So that's what, like 108, 109 gallons. Right. Ballpark. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I went from... 10 gallons to 10 times that amount. 10 times that. Um, I'd like to say I, it was an easy transition. It, it wasn't. The first couple right. of times I, I, I brewed on, on our system now, it, it, it kicked my ass a little bit. Um, but it, it's like everything else. It, it's just learning the nuances of the system, kind of getting my rhythm down in my, get, getting in a routine. Um, now I, I'm, I'm, what, I've got 10 batches under my belt give or take, um, I, I'm starting to find the nuances of it and trying, you know, getting my, you know, now I'm, it, whereas the first time it took me 12 hours to brew it, it took me what, six or seven hours today. So yeah, it, it's getting easier. Right. Sure. The, the efficiency is definitely, you know, coming along yeah. because we were like, oh, we got to figure this out. We don't want to be here for like two straight days trying sure. to get this thing done. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean like, and, and that's the thing. I mean like just to hear 10 batches under your belt. I mean, like to some people who maybe don't know much about brewing, you know, they might be like, Oh, well, I mean, that's cool. Yeah. But like 10 batches at a hundred and, and what, nine gallons yeah. a piece. Yeah. That's a shitload of beer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is. you it guys is. are brewing a lot of beer and that's, it's very exciting. Well, say like, just to put it into perspective, one batch may be six full half barrels of beer. And if anybody's had like a kegger and had to throw a half barrel in their trunk or whatever, or if you own a bar or, you know, you're just familiar with the beer industry, you know, that's a lot of beer. Absolutely. That's a ton of beer. You could actually swim in these things. I mean, I don't know what would happen to you, but it's <laughs> that would be possible. Awesome. It's Not, possible. We haven't tried. I want to. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can just heat the bottom up and have like a little hot tub there kind of go. thing going out. We'd really, really have to clean it out the next day. <laughs> Definitely. That's very cool. So, like, what do you think, you know, once you get out there and you have this idea, you talk to your partners, everything's going good. It seems like a great idea. And then you full on pull the trigger and you lease a space. What the hell is going through your mind at that very moment? Oh, geez. I mean, it was like jumping into the void, you know. Um, so this is the first time that I've been a business owner and, uh, you know, you you get a lot of growing pains with that kind of thing, a lot of trial and error. Uh, so, you know, it took me a little bit to find my stride. Luckily, I have great partners um, that understand a lot more than I do about, you know, what it takes to get something going. Uh, and then great friends that have kind of like helped us out along the way. Uh, they've been kind of just any anything that we've needed, an extra hand, you know, somebody knows a little bit more about, nailing a, uh, you know, something into the wall than I do. Like, come down, help me out. And everybody's been great. Some people work for beer, you know, which has been. That's always good. Yeah, which has been good because then I <laughs> get to drink some too. Unlimited supply of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just been, it's been a really positive thing uh, as we got our momentum going. Uh, now, of course, with any business, you're going to have your minor setbacks or major setbacks. Uh, we didn't hit too many major ones, just a continuation of minor ones, you know, yeah. Um I think that with the, the city going through uh, a couple growing pains themselves, um, we just kind of fell right in that sweet spot. But I mean, they've been great. They've been working with us big time, helping us, uh, you know, just continue the momentum. And uh, I mean, here we are. We're getting ready to open. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's that's great to hear that the city is working with you because, you know, through the grapevine, you hear that, you know, some horror stories from different business owners around town who yeah. have been here before. And uh, I think that, and Sean, you and I have talked about this before, I think that with, you know, some of the new folks that are coming into Greensburg and getting into kind of the local political scene here, things are getting definitely younger 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, more hip around here. And people do want to see. They experience things that, you know, that we've experienced. You down in the South Side Works, me in Lancaster. They see that people are out. They're walking the streets. Things are awesome. People are shopping. That's you know. like... Uh, I think one of the biggest things, I mean, you get like a injection of like fresh blood into an area and, uh, you know, people that have gone away and come back or, you know, realize that Pittsburgh isn't a, a terrible amount of time away, you know, people right, yeah. go down there, go to dinner, go see a, a concert or a play, or maybe just go visit some friends, come back in the same night, you know, within a couple hours. So, and you can see the growth down there. I mean, I think people want to see it come here you know where For they sure. live instead of like you know having to travel to see this or go to dinner here or you know whatever they want at home uh so that's definitely been positive to have those people in the positions that they can help out with that and i think a lot of people just started to realize lately that just because there's change coming that it doesn't mean that the city of greensburg is going to lose its ideals you know there's a city it's an old city right um i mean there's a college that's been growing every year uh, and places come and go. But I mean, that whole mentality, um, just the, the family ordeals or ideals, um, the kind of community that Greensburg has. I mean, I think that's always going to stay. That's For always sure. going to be the, uh, the focus. And, you know, maybe we'll just bring a couple uh, extra people here. Right. I mean, that's taxpayers dollars. So everybody's got to be happy about sure. that. Sure. I mean, like, I, I like how you explain that because it is going to keep that, it's going to keep the family like ideals and things like that. But it also like when you live in a town like this, uh, you know, something that's trying to thrive on local business, the people have a, a tremendous amount of respect for where they live and the people who are running these businesses. So nobody wants to, you know, go get crazy rowdy things like that. I mean, like there, those, those values are going to stick around. I yeah. mean, like, you know, you respect your neighbors, you respect the people who own the businesses around you and things like that. So, you know, I a hundred percent agree with you. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I don't mean to like cut into what, where our momentum's going, but I'm getting thirsty. So I don't know if you guys want me to like pour some beers. Let's do the damn thing. Uh, okay. Sure <laughs> All right. I got a, I got a couple things for you here too, Jordan. Sweet. Ted, what do you think uh, while he's doing that? What do you go? There you on? go. That's a Ooh. Invisible Man t-shirt. Nice. Uh, I got a couple uh, pine glasses here. We're going to drink out of them, and then you can take them home and wash them and keep them. Sweet. I love me some swag. Swag is always good. <laughs> gotcha. Invisible Man growler as well. And uh, this is filled with our Saison that we're going to have on, on draft whenever we open. And... Uh, Ted can go into a little bit of what that is. Um, this is our Saison. Uh, I'm calling it the Mothership Connection. Um, Saison, it's a 5.3%, I believe. Um, it, it's a style um, that uh, can best be described as funky, I guess. Um, it, it's a French-Belgian style. Um it's brewed in, in with using a botanomycins, which give it like a a barnyardy mm-hmm. funkiness to it, um, real earthy. Yeah, um, it's actually, if not my favorite style, probably in my top three. Um, I find them to be very refreshing. Um, I, I'll, I'll just let the beer speak for itself, I guess. Absolutely. Cheers, right, gentlemen. gentlemen. Cheers. cheers. This is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Every goddamn beer that I've had from you guys, this is the, I think this is the fourth one that I've tried. Yeah, it's all so drinkable. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I mean, it's funky, but like it's not what you would think. I mean, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's got like uh, such a different flavor from what we're used to drinking. Right. You know, you grow up around our area, and you grow up in like you know Natty Light, right. Miller Light, Rolling, Rolling Rock. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a, you know, totally different style, but I mean, you know, the flavor is just outstanding. It's fantastic. And it's drinkable. If somebody's looking to come get a lighter beer, it's not going to kick you on your butt. I mean, that was the biggest thing with a taste this, this bold, you would think that the alcohol content 
would be much higher. Yeah. What did you say? It was 5.2? 5.2, 5.3. Um, I don't have the numbers in front it's of me. but yeah, somewhere fantastic. Else. Traditionally, they're, they're lower. They're supposed to be, the history of them, they were drank um, in the fields during the summer. Mm-hmm. So they were low um, alcohol, 2%, something like that. Oh, okay. Um, recently, people have, have decided that they need to be 7 8%. Um, a little excessive. Right. Um, so I, I try to get mine in <clears throat> right around five and a half, give or take. See, that's awesome because I think that with a beer, like I said, with with a beer that that, that is this bold in flavor yeah. and has a low al- uh, alcohol content like that, you could drink these things nonstop. I mean, like, you know, there's reasons that people go out and get Miller Lite or Michelob Ultra or something like that <laughs> because... You know, they don't want to drink these super heavy beers that are just going to kick them on their ass and and be done for the night. So they drink these light beers. But, you know, something like this, this is this is a godsend. And then you can take, you know, you stick true to the original, you know, the original recipe or whatever. But then you make up for it in some of your other beers. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. There's uh, just a couple of beers that, um, that Ted did as like, you know, just kind of like free tasting evenings we had at Yugo's just to get our name out, which are going to be probably coming up more seasonal, like in the warm weather stuff that mm-hmm. are my favorites. But he has a pumpkin porter that's coming out. Um, you know, this is going to be our like October seasonal beer. And Saw that on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> very yeah, excited. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly. It's I'm very excited. Gnarly. And it's not like overly sweet. Like nothing we do is like overly over the top sweet mm-hmm. uh, or harsh. You know, we just like it smooth drinking. Um, we're like beer drinkers beer. You yeah. Know? Which you might not find a cinnamon sugar rim around our our <laughs> beers, but <laughs> but you'll still enjoy them. Absolutely. I think it's it's really it's a great tasting beer. I mean, like this is now I've had probably only a handful of Saisons ever in my life. I think the first one I ever had was uh down at uh, the head keeper and it was so just kind of out of my wheelhouse yeah. that immediately I was just like, ah, I, I don't like it. Yeah. Um, so I kind of stayed away from those. This honest to God, this is something that I could just drink. Like I, I could imagine myself having this after like cutting grass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's hot as shit outside. Yeah. <laughs> I want that bold flavor. Yeah. But I also want to be able to finish the grass. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, like, that's important. I'm looking for something that, like, is just going to put me to sleep and then, like, I don't even have to cut the grass. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you, uh, what do you have in the works as far as, you know, most of the the micro brews out there, um, you know, the big guys like Stone, uh, Sam Adams, those guys, Dogfish Head, they go for High octane shit. <laughs> Do you have one one beer that is either being made or floating around in your brain that is going to be high octane? Um, actually, funny you should mention that is um, I just got picked up an order yesterday um, where I'm going to do um, a Belgian triple. Um, and that'll probably come in right around nine and a half maybe closer to 10 ish. That's nice. Um, so I want to get something that's like a 16. Yeah. (laughs) Something that's going to like make my pants fall down after I drink (laughs) one. Holy shit. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean like, you know, those guys out there, the, the dogfish had one twenty. I remember the first time I ever tried that me and a guy, it was probably 200 and, 215, 220 pounds. We split that. A 12 ounce bottle. And I was kicked on my ass. <laughs> and he was kicked on his ass. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is something else. Yeah. Like, it was intense. Yeah, that's like that like OG Kush of beers. Like, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> something that just like puts you down and you're like, oh man, what, what happened? You know, I'm, I thought I was a pro at this. And then right. you just get that left hook and got to go back to the drawing board. Right. It's something else. Um, I had a similar story with that, but it wasn't the 120. It was uh, Mad Elf. Oh, good God, yes. So 
when I used to live in the South side, I, I'd go to fat heads and they would have a Christmas, like Christmas Eve party. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a day before Christmas Eve and they would have the previous three years of Matt Elf on draft. So it's like, you know, three years ago, oh, yeah. aging, two years, aging last year, aging this year. And you would just see people like sliding down the walls, falling off the stools, like <laughs> all over the place. Oh my gosh, this tastes so good. Snoring, like drooling on the bar. I might have been one of those guys once or twice, <laughs> but that's like my go to when it comes to like kind of like high octane kind of stuff. I'm yeah. a sucker for it. That's awesome. What's the biggest beer you had? Biggest. And did you like it? That's the, that's the big thing. The one that sticks out in my head the most, um, I might have had bigger beers, but the one that sticks out the most is um, Sam Adams Triple Buck. Oh my. Uh, I think I was, I don't know, 22, 23 at the time. Um, and I, it, I still have the bottle. It comes in a real beautiful glass blue bottle with gold yeah. etching and stuff. Um, I can't say. Actually, I still have the bottle, and I think there's still half of the bottle in there. Um, it just... It wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's high octane. I I can't remember what that comes in at. Um, I remember looking at it when yeah. they when they released it, and me and a few of my friends were talking about splitting the cost of that bottle because yeah. it was <laughs> it was quite high. Yeah, that's the stuff where you drink it and just you instantly just grow a giant like woolly mammoth beard. It's just so <laughs> harsh, and like girls too. Yeah, right. Um, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't hold back. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's the one that sticks out. It, it, I don't know. I don't know. My palate probably wasn't as, as refined then as it is now. Right. Um, so if I tried it now, I might have a, a different opinion of it. But I was not a big fan of it the first time I had it. Yeah. Um, as a matter, like I said, I drank like half the bottle. We did like like shots of it. And like, all right. Tastes like Ooh. maple syrup. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the beers out there now, they're like, you know. Everything goes one way. Everything is just kind of like whatever the the trending thing is. Um, like you guys were talking about your pumpkin porter earlier. I I mean I'm a big fan of pumpkin. I like it. It's something that I like. I loved uh, Michigan Brewing. Uh, I think it has since gone out of out of business. Screaming but they pumpkin. had screaming pumpkin. Yeah. That was yeah. incredible. Those two were like my favorite pumpkin beers ever. And it turns out they're like the sweetest pumpkin beers that, that, <laughs> that you can, that you can even taste. Yeah. But like, I think when we were drinking those beers, they were still made like lower production, right. smaller batches. They weren't as sweet as they are now. Yeah. Cause I had one, I bought a, a four pack uh, a couple weeks ago. It'd be damned with a carb diet. <laughs> so I went and bought a four pack of those things and like I, I cracked one open and I'm thinking like, I told my wife, I was like, yo, get ready. This is like bliss in a, in a glass. And I drank it and I was like, uh, uh, it's, it's good. Like I, it wasn't like when I was blown away, like back in the day. And I think that probably goes, you know, hand in hand with what you were saying, Ted, about like your palate just not being as refined as, you know, it is now. Um, I'm a big IPA guy. Everybody's yeah. a big buy IPA guy, but uh, those are just like my favorite beers. They they really are, and I think that those are almost like the gateway drug to everything else. <laughs> like I, you you drink those first, and you get that like big nasty like bitter beer taste in your mouth, and then everything else seems to be like, oh, this is good too. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, IPAs have more on the uh, the scale like the spectrum of beer than Mm -hmm. any other like style of beer. I mean, you can go milkshake, New England, hazy, juicy, Northwest, Mm -hmm. West coast, American. I mean, they might come up with three different styles IPA tomorrow. Sure. But I mean, you can go from zero to 10 on the scale of like how hoppy it is and like how sweet it is or, or whatever. I mean, I don't see very many other styles like that that like stay true and each kind of like variation of it is good. Right. I'm a big fan. I mean, like for me, it just seems like the hoppier, the better these days. Um, I remember my first craft beer ever, ever my entire life was in college. 
I had a painting class. I was there until like eight o'clock at night. And every Thursday night, my roommates would throw this giant party. I would come home from my painting class and there would be like 45 people just like in and around my house doing God knows what. And I would always have to go in and catch up. So normally I would go in to my stash of Miller Lite (laughs) and I would just like try and destroy as many as I could right off the bat. Yeah, because you can't be like the odd man out. Right. You know, especially I mean, when you're young, you're in college, right. you're like, oh man, I've got to take a shower. I got to at least drink three beers in the shower. Right. Then when I'm getting dressed, I might be able to have another one. Then like another one, like as I'm walking down, <laughs> right. or, you know, tying my shoes. It was awesome. And I just kind of was like, I'm going to hurry up and go home and I'm going to catch up with the rest of the party. And what happened was there was no Miller Lite left. <laughs> Everybody had drank my stash. So when I went in, what I found was an eerie rail bender. And I was like, I don't know what the hell this is. That's a classic. But I threw it up in a bong. And I <laughs> beer bonged my first craft beer of my entire life. I beer bonged an eerie rail bender. And I was like, God bless you. Blown yeah. out of my mind. I was like, yo, I'm caught up immediately. <laughs> it was intense. That's thick, too. I mean, it is. You know, that's like. Man, it's I, it's a pretty big beer, especially. I had some bad memories doing some beer bongs <laughs> on like some thicker beer, so I don't even want to think about it oh, right now. Good God, right? Gag reflex going. Bleh. Yep. There's something else, man. What uh, do you guys remember your first craft beer? I mean, how crafty do you? Want? I mean, for for, for first, us, first for, first thing. I mean, like something outside of the norm of like Miller Light. So Natty Light, Rolling you know, Rock. We we grew up in Lake Trobe. Right. So we drank a lot of Rolling Rock growing up. Yep. Way before the legal limit, probably. Um <laughs> so that was like kind of the normal beer, you know, for us. Mm-hmm. Um and then you get like your light beers and your beast and all that other cheap stuff that, you know, high school students can afford. Uh, but I remember I think it was like junior year, uh, summer going summer after junior year, my dad took me to Hilton Head. Um, it was just him and I, and I got served everywhere, you know, <laughs> it was really, really groovy. Uh, you're an old soul. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, I mean, I've had the same wrinkle since I've been 14, right. so I don't know what that says, but I guess I had a stressful life. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I had a red stripe for the first time nice. and that's not really craft, but it, it's just, it's, it's it was different. different for me. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, man, like this is crazy. I didn't know beer could taste like this. I was right. just used to drinking, you know, typical American style beer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I had Sam Adams that week. Um, I had a dogfish head that week. And I I think it was a 60 minute because yeah. that was like their like big like go to. That's for, right. Like when, when they were starting to distribute uh, to like broader areas. Um. I remember not liking it, but then again, I was like, you know, 17. So who knows? Right. I mean, Dogfish Head has this, like every one of their beers has this, this kick and it, and that back to that, that aftertaste, it all <coughs> tastes the same. Yeah. Um, that was like one of the first things I noticed drinking their beer specifically. Um, got into some like Great Lakes, Great Lakes. Yep. I think my second beer ever craft beer was a Christmas ale, the Great Lakes Christmas ale. You guys oh, had wow. that? Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. That's like off the hook. <laughs> yeah. That shit's awesome. And it's just so good. It's good. We were like lucky enough when a lot of these like, I would say like powerhouse microbreweries that we've been mm-hmm. talking about were just starting to mass distribute. Right. So they weren't making all these bigger batches that they had to sacrifice ingredients to cover costs right. and everything. So we were getting it in it's like almost its purest form as opposed to now when they're like, I think a lot of these breweries like Airbnb either been bought out by like Bud or Miller or, you know, whoever. And, you know, they, they go and change certain things for profits. For sure. I mean, you know, you still have the groundwork there. You still have like what it, the essentials, but like there might be like one or two pieces that are missing that mm-hmm. like will never be the same that we remember the first time that we had it. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Like everything. I think I watched a documentary at one point about, uh, you know, how InBev is, you know, buying up everything. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, you know, they were kind of 
you know, bamboozling people sitting there with like these, like these crafty names and these cool ass, you know, bottles with cool brewery art on it and stuff like that. And then like, you know, you flip it over and it's like in Isaac Bush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I think everybody should be cautious of that. Sure. Uh, because I know InBev and a couple, a couple other, like, I guess, corporations of, of, of that same like demeanor are looking at smaller breweries now because it, I mean, I know just in Pennsylvania, I'm not sure about other States, but um, you can open five locations under one brewery license. Uh, so what a company like InBev will do is they'll come and they'll buy that license and then they get rid of five competitors. Wow. Yeah. So dude, and, and, and people that go to these places, they may not even know the beer may change a little bit. The prices may go up. Yeah. It may be more commercial, but I mean, that's kind of like what they're trying to do. And I mean, it makes sense from their perspective, but people need to be For aware sure. of that. And because they think they're supporting something local, mm-hmm. they might not be. That's a good point. I mean, like, you know, it's in, in that documentary, it was, it was something like, you know, the big three and like InBev and all of that stuff. They all, you know, Coors, Miller and, and uh, Bud, you know, they all, they all kind of owned like, the lion's share of everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like all these breweries that we've been talking about and stuff, they, uh, you know, were nothing like tenths of a percent yeah. of the, of the country and things like that. So what I'm, what I'm hoping, you know, you just said that that's kind of that's scary, man. I mean, it's a smart business move for them. Right. But at the same time, I mean, like you got guys like, like us or guys like you who are, who are making this stuff, you're in business that's, uh, you know, that's frightening. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I think anybody that's opening a brewery, they're think open something small. If you do well, put the money back into it, open a production facility, open something else small in a right. different area. I mean, that's kind of like the game plan for everybody that wants to do it. And uh, I think that these other companies like figure this out. They want to come take advantage of it. So... I would just say to all the other people that are into craft beer, like just, you know, fight. Yeah, for sure. Fight the man. <laughs> fight the man. You know? Right. But don't fight the invisible man. No, 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 no. <laughs> no because you can't see us and we'll trip you. <laughs> exactly. So as we go through and we're sitting here talking about all of these, you know, maybe influences and things like that. Ted, what do you think, you know, is what drives you? basically to to like get in and start making you know your your the invisible man beer so like what what influences do you have what's your major influences is it recipes is it is it breweries is it is it whatever i try to brew stuff that i enjoy Mm -hmm. um so like i don't enjoy a lot of fruited beers anything fruit forward um, not saying that I, I don't do them. We're still going to do them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Cause I yeah, like them. Yeah. D- disclaimer. <laughs> I, I still will do them, but they're not my wheelhouse. I right. guess. Um, for the longest time, I, I, I've been home brewing for a very long time. Um, and for the longest time I would brew on my days off. So I would brew one batch on one day off for me, another batch, um, on my day off for my wife and she likes fruited beers. So, I still had a lot of experience doing them. Um, but I, I guess that's my influence. Like I like Saison, so I, I'll do Saisons. I like Belgian styles, um, so I'll do Belgian styles. Um, one, of the, one of the beers that we do have coming out, um, we have a, a, what type of wheat? It's just American wheat. American wheat, it's conditioned on fruity pebbles. Oh, good God. That sounds amazing. I think it's gonna be pretty gnarly. Uh, <laughs> See, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is the type of shit that I think is very important for a small town like this. When I was in Lancaster, there was this, this donut shop down the street. Every time we had a meeting, we would go get these donuts. I forget what the hell the place was called. Fractured Prune is what it was called. Oh, that's a sweet name. <laughs> the Fractured Prune. And like the logo was awesome because it was like a prune with like sunglasses on and stuff with a with crutches. Like, you know, like it broke his leg. Yeah. You could go in there and you could make your own donut. I mean, like straight up, like 
dough, they would throw it in and then, you know, decorate it for you however you wanted. And I went in one time and my boss at the time was like, you can get anything you want here. And I was like, okay. Um, so I'm like sitting there looking around and they had like Oreo and they had like brownie donuts and, you know, salted caramel and like all of this other shit. And oddly enough, I said, do you guys have fruity pebbles back there? And the guy was like, yep, hold on. He went (laughs) to a closet, got a box of fruity pebbles and like literally made me a goddamn donut. Yeah. (laughs) And, And he handed it to me and the thing was hot. Yeah. And I was like, all right. He was this probably is, excited. He's yeah, probably really into right? that kind of stuff. <laughs> I mean, who knows how long the Fruity Pebbles have been sitting in that yeah. closet, but it was awesome. It was like one of the best donuts ever. And this is like, that's the cool thing because when you're making small runs of product like that, you know, you're not dunking donuts. Yeah. You're not pumping out, you know, 3,000 donuts a day every morning between seven and nine o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, when you have small run stuff, and you're really just kind of catering to a small crowd. Um, it's just, you can do funky things. Yeah. You can do awesome stuff. Yeah. And that's, I mean, in my opinion, that's that's how you grow. Yeah. But like, I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, um, that's definitely like kind of like what we want to do. Constantly like rotate stuff. Keep trying to like, you know, push the limit. Figure out what we can do to get better. And uh, we don't want to stick with like something for like 20 years. You know, we want to do a ton of different things. If we have something that is going to sell off the shelves, when it comes back, it will sell sell out uh, quicker. You know, we don't want to keep it on there for so long until people like kind of get sick of it and it dies. Um, I think like I really got into that when I started going to Yugo's and Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, um, always had rotating taps all the time. You know, they would never stick with something for too long. He always had things coming in and out. And um, some of my favorite beers I've had there uh, that I would never have had before anywhere else. So um, I was just like, why don't we do the same thing? Because people dig it, you know? I mean, you guys, they have tons of like crazy beer drinkers that go oh, in yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, and the stuff that they offer is, is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you can go in there and get some like Really, really great beer. Yeah. I mean, Headkeepers is good with that, too. Mm-hmm. They have a large bottle selection. Um, it, like, you know, I, I feel blessed being in Greensburg and having these two, uh, you know, like beer powerhouses like that I like to go to. <laughs> oh, and, for sure. Like, it's great. It's crazy. I mean, like, you know, the first time I walked into Headkeeper, I was like, you know, looking around and uh, I know Adam down there. And yeah. I'm just like, dude, how many beers do you have here? And he's like, a uh, little over 600. Shout out Adam Grosset. The hell? (laughs) Like 600 beers. It was nuts. It was awesome. And I mean, like you could go and do anything. And as we were talking about the Belgians, uh, one of the ones that I did enjoy was Delirium. Okay. I was like, yo, this is a really good Belgian. It was very drinkable. And the other the other night when I was talking with my wife about this, I said, I was like, yo, their Belgian really reminds me of something like Delirium because I don't like Belgians, but that beer was so goddamn good that I I got a second one. Yeah. Like I would never buy a second Belgian ever. You know what? Like touching on that, that brings you back to like, that was probably the first really like European style beer that I've had. When we were in college, it was like mm-hmm. Delirium Tremens. Was that the one with the pink elephants? Yeah. yeah. And we got it like, oh, my God, look at these elephants. This, right. We're going to get so, like, messed up, like, right. blah, blah, blah. And, I mean, yeah, we got drunk. Sure. Much drunker than I would off, like, drinking regular beer. I was like, oh, this is crazy. But I don't want to pay $18 for, like, two beers. At- <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy because, I mean, like, dude, they're Now bottles. I don't mind. You look know? at those bottles. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. you know. I mean, like, they look like ceramic. Yeah. <laughs> I, they, fuck, they might be ceramic. I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. You know, the, put a the, nice flower in there right? and some water, yeah. you know, make it a family heirloom. It's nuts. But, like, I mean, I remember that being one Belgian that I, like, I kind of really liked. And I was just like, you know what? When I tasted your Belgian, I really was just like, this is off the chain like yeah. this is so good so every beer that i've had from you guys is like in, incredible it's yeah, so good 
oddly enough, I haven't tried your IPA yet. Well, <laughs> and that's my favorite. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming yeah. along. I'm very excited to give that a shot. Yeah, we uh, we have a couple different things going on with our IPAs right now. So what we did was we brewed a couple batches, and we're trying to do similar styles, but like drastically different. Um, so you might get a Northwest IPA, uh, and you might get a West Coast IPA with apricot, and then there might be like a milkshake IPA. Mm-hmm. That was like traditionally like New England style. And then you'll have a traditional New England. So, I mean, we're going to have like a couple rotating IPAs, like right off the bat. That's awesome. That's good. I mean, like, I feel like, you know, that's such a, like I said earlier, everybody's an IPA guy. So, you know, that's definitely a good, good thing to do is have tons of IPAs. You you have to, you have to, but but also like, you don't want to like oversaturate. I've been to so many breweries that are like, Oh, we have 12 IPAs, like New England IPAs, and we have one stout and one Pilsner. I'm like, okay, but what what happens when that that bubble breaks? Right. You know, right. we serve traditional style beers, European style. Um, we, we do them the right way. And then we have the stuff that, hey, look, we're going to try to do what's like really cracking right now, you know? Um and do it well and give it our own twist. Uh, but I think like styles are always going to change. Mm-hmm. If you can have like a very powerful, like old school, like list of beers that you can do, you're, you can always fall back on that for sure. Like Ted has these amazing <laughs> Belgians. I mean, not a lot of people are screaming off the hilltop. Like, you know, give me a Belgian. Like they want like this, like IPA that tastes like orange juice, <laughs> but <laughs> Everybody's been killing the Belgians, right. you know? I mean, it's like, they love them. They, they're here forever. They sell. I mean, we just talked about Delirium. They don't have a very strong marketing presence in this area, as I can see. But right. I bet you everybody that drinks beer knows about them. Oh, I'm sure of it. I don't doubt. I mean, yeah. and that's, that's what you got to do. Do one thing great. Right. You want to do everything great. <laughs> so basically what I want to know is like, how did you guys overcome like your fear and like that little that little voice in your head that was like this is a crazy idea oh i mean you don't ever overcome that (laughs) you don't ever overcome that i mean i think it's like if you want to be successful you have to be scared Mm because it like makes you uncomfortable and i think it like lights a fire underneath your butt um but i mean every day i'm like man what am i doing right you know am i going to be good enough at this um, and you know, you just got to be confident. You got to just get, try to like do whatever you can to keep it going, moving in, in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, I, I, I see people I haven't seen for a while that maybe don't know that I'm opening up a, a brewery and, uh, like, Oh, you know, what have you been up to? I'm like, well, you know, this is what I'm doing. They're like, Oh my God. I'm like, what, <laughs> you know, <I'm> like, <laughs> wait, hold on. What, what do you mean? Oh my God. Right. And they're like, I just, how'd you get into that? That's so awesome. And I'm like, well, you know, it just kind of fell in my lap a little bit, but I've always wanted to do something right in this kind of ballpark. And I've always wanted to do something in Greensburg. Um, so it was like the perfect combination of things, perfect domino effect. And, um, you know, it, 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 it makes me happy that I'm on my way to doing like something that I think I'm going to be good at, something I think I'm going to have fun at, because that's kind of like what you have to wake up every day thinking like, oh Absolutely. man, like I'm going to have fun today. I'm going to be good at what I'm doing today. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you just kind of roll with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like, yeah, I mean, I wake up every day thinking, I don't know what I'm doing in any aspect. And right. I just kind of like, I'm like Patrick Bateman. I just like watch other people and just kind of <laughs> like act how I think that they're acting. And then hopefully nobody will notice. Right. There you go. That's a good plan. <laughs> yeah. Ted, what were you doing uh, I guess for a job for a living before this all happened for you. Uh, I was in uh, restaurant management for a long time. Holla. Yeah. There you go. A long time. It's a grind, right? Yeah. I mean, so the fact that you guys were both in the service industry already, you know, is a very, it speaks volumes to the fact that, you know, you guys are good at what you're doing. That I think this is why that you, why you've gotten as far as you've gotten. That's a high pressure job. Yeah. 
It really is. It certainly well, is. I mean, I think that people that want those kind of like pressures don't look at it like that. You know, they're like, oh man, you know, look at all the freedom. That's the positive thing. Right. And then you know the pressures are going to be there and you just deal with them how they come. But that's not like the first thing on your mind. Uh, where, I mean, I, I think other people that, like my mom's like every day, oh my God, are you okay? What's going on? You know, it's like, hey, listen, I love you. Pressure is not your thing. <laughs> I, I got this, you know, <laughs> you know, um, and I'm just, I'm just going with it. Right. You know? That was uh, a lot of, so when I started my, my business, my video business, I went and uh, <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't tell my parents right away. Me and uh, Jesse, my wife, we bought a house and it just so happened that the day we closed on the house was my last day at, at work. And so whenever my dad called to say congratulations on buying the house, I told him about me quitting my job. He literally, I was in Home Depot. I was looking at lighting fixtures. Mm. He literally was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I've never, ever told you to do anything like this. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's hard for parents to just kind of like watch their kids move like off the pathway. Right. You know, I had, um, both my parents are like super old school. My mom was a very hardworking woman, owned her own business. My dad worked off and on while we were younger, you know, did something that he could provide for me, for my son, and, uh, you know, still be there to like be like a good father, a right. good friend. Um, and I think like, because they grew up in a certain way that they would never dream of their children, like, going like this way when they want to go this way. So right. it's just like, it's like a culture shock, you know? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's like anything now. Oh yeah. You know, like I'm doing the same thing. I have stepkids now and it's like, you know, I see them nonstop playing video games and like doing all this stuff. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Like get out there and play stickball. Get oh, yeah. out there and like grab a skateboard, go ride your bike. Go <laughs> Why do I something. think, I think these kids like just like, substitute things because right. when I was young and I have a stepdad um, and I'd go and visit my dad, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, like once or twice a week and I would bring my comic books with me or I'd bring my baseball cards mm -hmm. and like people, adults would try to talk to me. They try to take me places to, sh you know, talk to their friends because right. you want to show your kids off. And I would just be like, yeah, okay, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm reading this X-Men or, you know, Fantastic <laughs> Four or, you know, going through my upper deck um, and now the kids are just like in their phones. Like yeah. I talked to my son, Colin, he's 14. And, uh, I mean, him and I are best friends, but like, I'm like, dude, put your phone away, bro. Right. Like, what is so important on Instagram that you can't like sit here and talk to me? Right. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is like, I remember my dad saying that to me and being like, put your comic books away. Right. You know? So, I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you just substitute something with another right. thing. Absolutely. How did we get on this? I have not a clue. I'm not sure. I think now that we've hit in a certain age frame, every conversation ends up being about those damn kids. <laughs> right, you know? <laughs> Jeez. Did you guys, were you guys privy to the whole, like across Westmoreland post on that? No, no. Yeah. Good for you. I literally, I've never, I never, ever, ever argue with people on social media. That's something that I just, I will not do. Like you could tell you could you could sit there and post like, yo, this guy's green. And I'd be like, awesome. I'd like it yeah. and move on. Some lady was like, they should take, you know, whatever, I don't know which one's getting turned into a casino, or even if it is at this point. Uh JC Penny, Bonton, whatever. Kmart. <laughs> K no, I mean, no, it's like <laughs> Sears, I think. Sears and Bonton. Sears maybe. or something like that. They were like how about we make something for the kids instead? Why would we put a casino there? It's going to bring crime. It's going to bring, uh, you know, a bunch of addicts into our town. And, and I was sitting there like thinking about it. I remember I was in the shower and I'm just like, is it going to bring any more addicts into the town than, you know, a bar would mm -hmm. or anything like yeah. that? I mean, a casino has so much 
security, it's ridiculous. Yeah. A, it's going to just bring tons of jobs. Yep. Um, do we need another trampoline park within five miles of this town? Yeah. Like, do we need <laughs> do we need another sea base? Yeah. I mean, like for real. And like it just like it ate at me so hard just to like think about, you know, the the old school that is still here trying to like, you know, squash the new business yeah. that's coming into town. And I understand, you know, casinos are scary. I get it. Like, you know, to, to people that don't go to casinos, I get it. But I mean, it's just that's something that's going to bring so much revenue to our town. Yeah. And, you know, other businesses around here are going to flourish because of that casino. Well, I think like when people think casino, they think like a lot of free like cash money, like floating around. Sure. You know, and with that, you might have prostitution, you might have theft, robbery, you know, a lot of those things. But where you have any kind of business, you're going to have the same thing. It's just on a bigger scale with a casino. And like you said, there's going to be tons of security. Um, I mean, it's not going to be a place for kids. For sure. And even though we lived in the mall when we were growing up, mm-hmm. like, you know, did all kinds of stupid stuff. Um, my son likes to go to the mall with his buddies. It's not the same anymore. No, it's you know, not. you don't have that feeling of comfort and that kind of stuff isn't like the main thing to do. Right. You know, it's like, Oh, Hey, we're going to go to the mall on a Friday night or whatever, you know? So you may not have as many eyes on, on people like as many friends. They're mm-hmm. watching out for each other, parents, there walking around. So, I mean, you may not know what's going on, but I mean, I guarantee you that they're going to have people up there like watching like a hawk. You know, for sure. what's going on because around here they're trying to really crack down on like drugs. Yeah. Everything that goes along with that. So, I mean, I, I've, I have no fear that like our, uh, you know, our police force is going to like take care of what needs to be taken care of up mm-hmm. there. And for sure. if we can bring in more tax money, then Hey, let's do it. That's let's the party. whole thing. I mean, like, you know, I've, I've, I've read different articles about, uh, you know, the tax money and what it's going to benefit. Mm-hmm. They were talking about paying pretty much the entire city's school tax and property tax with the revenue from that casino. Yeah, that's now, amazing. I mean, I live in the city of Greensburg. So do I. So, I mean, that would be great. Absolutely. I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, you go in there, you want to play some poker. You go play some poker. Not everybody that is that likes to play cards is some like degenerate <laughs> asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you know, you want to go on a Friday night. You want to go out to dinner. Yeah. Uh, you want to go down. You want to swing and grab some uh, some beers at your brewery. Yeah. And then you want to head out to the casino or something like that and just, you know, make a night of it. Yeah. So here's my idea with, you know, they can open the casino in Sears, but in the Bonton, I wanted them to do a complete reenactment of GoldenEye for Nintendo 64, <laughs> where we could go in and, <laughs> and I'm serious. Like, the, this, like I've been talking about this for years. Nobody, th- nobody oh, thinks it's a good hell? idea. So you can go in and play paintball in the different GoldenEye levels that were multiplayer. I would be there opening day. <laughs> now it's not going to draw anybody below 29 or <laughs> above 45, not. but right there, that, that dynamic, I mean, it's like the top golf of Westmoreland County. You know, you right. can just go in there and blow your buddy away with some paintballs. Minus the eighteen million it takes to open a top golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it'd oh, probably take eighteen million to open that up right? too. You Maybe. Know? But you get to dress like odd jobs sometimes too. There so you that's <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> Who the hell doesn't love a good James Bond? Yeah. Oh man, I'm excited about the new one. I think it's gonna be Daniel Craig's last one. Yeah. I think they need to go in like a different direction. I'm a big action movie guy. <laughs> Me and, when Marcus and I have mm-hmm. watched every movie you can imagine since right. like, you know, we were kids. I'm and, sure of it. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he's, he's got me on to some like James Bond kind of stuff. I was never a fan before. Now I'm big into it. James Bond is something that I think every, every man needs to watch. Yeah. It's, it's something. And, and I've noticed that every girlfriend I've ever had, I try to get them to watch two things, James Bond and Rocky, and they lose interest very quickly. 
And I'm just like, okay, cool. Yeah. These are the two things that I can keep for myself. Yeah. Like, but that's also important because it's like, oh, this is what you do when you're not with me. Okay, go ahead. Have, <laughs> yeah. have more free time. <laughs> have a whole lot of free time. That's cool. <laughs> but like, honestly, name one movie character you'd rather be than James Bond. Nothing. Yeah. No. That's it. McLovin. Right? <laughs> I was going to say, maybe Stifler. He's I don't distant, know. <laughs> he's a distant second. So when you guys were like going through and trying to, you know, develop this whole idea and things, because to me, ideas, I'm an idea guy. That's what I, that's kind of what I like pride myself on. I, I have a ton of ideas, you know what I mean? <laughs> but ideas are cheap, you know what I mean? So like you get these ideas and if you don't finish them, then that that shit's not worth anything. You guys, you guys are doers, and that's that's what's happening. You guys are finishing some things, and that and it's very important. So, what do you think your best piece of advice would be to somebody out there that is starting a business for the first time? You guys being entrepreneurs for the first time, oh, man. myself too. I mean, I'm still learning stuff every day, um, right? But I think I never want to stop that. You know, every mm-hmm. day I want to learn something new, um, especially in business. I mean, Dude, there's so here. many ways to like get ahead and try to be more successful and, and learn something new and go in like different avenues. Uh, but I would say do your research because nothing comes easy. Um, and I was on team. I want everything to come easy, you know, right. for, for every, a minute. Dude, everybody does. Yeah. Um, I would say like my motto is always work smarter, not harder, but you got to do both. If you really, really want to like be successful, you got to be smart and you got to work your ass off. Um, And I mean, other than that, just like know your market, know your marketplace, know the people that you're talking to, know who's going to participate in this business with you from the opposite end you know, uh, you're buying and selling and and different things. Um, because I think a lot of people get invested in their feelings when it comes to business and they may open something that they're like, I really like this. I want to do this. And I don't know if it's like actually the smartest thing to do sometimes. I think you kind of have to look and be like, well, I know a little bit about this, but I think I could be really good at it. And I think that that's like where the market is for that. So I know that I could be successful make money and also enjoy it. I think from my perspective is make yourself uncomfortable. And, and, and Sean can attest every time I, I try one of our beers, he's like, mm, yeah. uh, well, <laughs> da, okay. You should have me as a, as an official taste. Yeah. Cause I'm just going to be like, <laughs> This is fucking great. <laughs> every, well, every time he tries it, he's always the first person to try it. And then like, he like gives me this face and I like my heart sinks into my stomach. I'm like, Oh God, what happened? What happened to this beer? What is he going to get sick? Am I going to have to take him to the hospital? Like, and he's like, Oh, well it's like maybe an eight out of 10. I'm like, what? And, and, and that's the thing. Like I, I I'm always, I'm never hundred percent happy with any of the, any of my beers I brew. I'm always pushing myself to to be better. And, and that's where I think that make yourself uncomfortable is is yeah. You're not going to be perfect at everything. Put yourself in situations where you can learn from and you can you know it sounds cliché but persevere over it. Dude, that's growth, man. Yeah. That's what it is. Honest to God though, I think you guys are doing some amazing stuff. Like for Greensburg, for yourselves. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's very important that, uh, you know, people like you guys are like blazing a trail, you know, in this town. That's something that's very important, uh, you know, just to, to give people that whole idea of, you know, I can walk outside of my apartment and I can see other folks walking around. They can, they're, they're shopping. They're enjoying their city. They're enjoying their time. 
So I definitely uh, give you guys props. And, uh, you know, not only for, you know, just following your dreams and things like that, but for being doers and not even, not even just like doers, but like finishers because you guys, you guys are opening. Yeah. So, I mean, like this shit is going down. Woo-hoo. Shit's getting real. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So why don't you guys, uh, go ahead and plug up all your social media, tell everybody where they can find you. And uh, we'll get out of here. Okay. Uh, first, I want to give a couple shout outs to a couple of places and people that have been helping us out along the way. For sure. I mean, we have tons of friends and family that have been helping us um, just every day, uh, no matter what we've been doing, support at home, through family life, through business. Um, but a couple of like local businesses, I mean, Sundog, um, Rialto, Baldi's Pizza, uh, Headkeepers, Mr. Toad's. Touchdown Club 2 in La Trobe. Uh, you know, the, the, a lot of friends and family within those places that have been super supportive to us and, like, have tried to, like, help us out along the way. Um, and, I mean, just, just a ton of other people that, like, I really appreciate. And, uh, you know, we're, we're at 132 South Pennsylvania Avenue, Greensburg. That's the street right behind the courthouse. We're going to be opening soon. You can see us on Instagram. You can see us on Facebook, Invisible Man Brewing. Uh, But we're out there. Our email is invisiblemanbrew at yahoo.com. So if anybody has any ideas or wants to hook us up with uh, maybe some business, uh, you know, shoot us an email. uh, Hopefully we can get back to you as soon as possible. Sweet. All right, boys. Well, thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Jordan Hauser, man. Yeah, legend. <laughs> legend. This was the first, <laughs> the first podcast. I'm, yeah, but I'm, I'm so excited. But to 30 have years you guys from now, on. when I say legend, they'll be like, "Jesus, Sean can travel through time. That's Holy crazy." Shit, yeah. He really caught it. We graduated like what 18 years ago at yeah. this point. Uh, no, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Eight, Jeez, 18 years. If you would have told me 18 years ago, we would have been sitting here in my podcast studio <laughs> talking about the brewery that you guys own, I would have been like, you guys are fucking yeah. stoned yeah. Yeah. out of your minds. And I thought podcast. I was going to be selling like hoverboards or something. Yeah. You know? right? <laughs> like I didn't know what was going on. Seriously. This was something that uh, I had looked forward to since I, I came up with the idea to get this podcast together. And uh, I'm glad you guys were on first. Yeah, dude, we had yeah, a good time, man. It. Yeah. It was awesome. a blast. Absolutely. I should have brought more beer, but you know, if you want to invite us back, I'll bring two two of those growlers next time. Oh, you guys are gonna be you guys are gonna be staples on this. <laughs> I nice. I imagine so. <laughs> All right. Later boys. See ya. Right.